When we do a regression analysis, we assume that the independent variable x explains the dependent variable y. Building on that assumption, we can make a scatter plot and let the computer draw the line that best describes the linear relationship between the two variables. With this line and the corresponding regression equation, we can predict the values of the dependent variable based on the values of the independent variable. Moreover, with R squared, we can also assess how well the line fits our data. However, for at least two reasons, we need to be very, very careful when we interpret the results. The first reason is that on the basis of a regression analysis, we can never prove that there is a causal relationship between the two variables. We can, in other words, never be certain that one of the variables is the cause of the other variable. This translates into one single, and not very complicated, but extremely important message. Correlation is not the same as causation. For instance, research suggests that eating a lot of chocolate increases your body weight. And this scatter plot shows that the more chocolate people eat, the larger their body weight tends to be. However, we need to be careful here. It might also be the case that causality runs in the opposite direction. The correlation between the two variables could also have another reason. It might, for instance, be the case that people with more body weight are more hungry and therefore eat more chocolate. This means that our x variable becomes your y variable and your y variable becomes your x variable. This changes your scatter plot and your regression equation. This is the old scatter plot and this is the new one. This is the old equation and this is the new one. The most likely explanation of the relation between chocolate consumption and body weight, however, is that causality runs in both ways. The more chocolate you eat, the heavier you get and the heavier you get, the more you crave chocolate. However, something else might be going on. A study has shown that the inclination to be hungry is genetic. This means that some people are because of biological reasons more likely to eat more chocolate, and also more likely to eat other things, and thus to gain body weight in the end. So, there is another variable, variable Z, that explains both chocolate consumption and body weight. We say that chocolate consumption and body weight are spuriously related to each other. In this example, we would call genetics a confounding variable if we had included it in our study. If it was not included, but could have the potential for confounding, we would call it a lurking variable. Let me give you one more example. This scatter plot shows that in countries with more income inequality, people tend to be, on average, more dissatisfied with politics. The assumption here would be that income inequality is the cause and dissatisfaction is the consequence because people will blame the political establishment when they perceive large differences between the rich and the poor. However, something else might be going on. It might well be the case that the degree of corruption in a country predicts both income inequality and political satisfaction. The idea then would be that when there is a lot of corruption, the rich will try to further enrich themselves at the expense of the poor leading to more inequality. At the same time, corruption will make people more cynical about the political process, as a result of which they become more dissatisfied. It is not x leading to y, but a secret variable z, which explains the correlation between x and y. A second reason why we should be very careful when interpreting regression results is that influential outliers can have strong effects on the results of an analysis. This scatter plot shows that there is a very strong positive correlation between chocolate consumption and body weight. But look at what happens when we add another case with rather extreme values on both the dependent and the independent variable. This person eats 500 grams of chocolate per week and weighs only 40 kilograms. Adding this case to our analysis strongly changes the result. The slope of the regression line now is not positive anymore, but negative indicating that the more chocolate you eat, the less you weigh. Especially when you only have a few cases in your analysis, outliers can have a large impact on your findings. If you see outliers, you should always investigate what's going on. If you have good reasons to suspect that the outlier is the result of wrong measurement, you might want to decide to delete the case from your sample. So, Always be very, very careful when you conduct a regression analysis. First, 
you always need to remember that with a regression analysis, you never prove that there is a causal relationship between two variables. And second, you should always check for influential outliers, especially when you are working with a small sample. These outliers could have a large impact on the results of your study.